went anywhere in the blue corner. He waited at 63 kilos on the scales. A height of 175 centimeters is 24 years of age. He fights out of the poor Pramuk gym in Thailand. He has 65 fights, 55 wins, 10 losses. Here's the Lumpini champion, the Omnoi champion, the K1 2004 Max champion. Ladies and gentlemen, King Kong Bakao! Welcome back to the X Night Night of Champions here at the Queen Elizabeth Stadium here in Hong Kong. We've got the second main event of the day here with Burkai entering the arena. It's one of the superstars of Thai boxing. Very, very well respected boxer in his own country. What do you know much about his, uh, his fighting style, Luke? Well said. I think tonight we're going to get treated to some of the most premier Muay Thai boxing Hong Kong has yet to see. Uh, Burkai is a very traditional Muay Thai fighter. Uh, he's incredibly young, he's incredibly powerful, and uh, I think Skorbowski's going to have his hands full on this one. Fantastic. Has he, has he fought much over, overseas, or is it mainly just Thailand? Uh, you know, he has fought overseas extensively. He is, he's a staple in Thailand. Um, he has fought quite extensively in Japan as well. He is the 2004 K1 Max champion. Uh, and he's gone up against a whole host of international fighters, so he is uh, very much the man of Muay Thai. Back to Philip Player in the ring. Who weighed in at 64 kilo with a height of 173 centimeters, aged 30 years of age. He is trained under great secrecy by his training. He has a fight record of 90 fights, 73 wins, 16 losses, one draw. He is the IMF 2000 world champion. The European Muay Thai champion, the Rod Damian champion, the 2002 King's Cup champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from France, he is the title dragon, Shane Skabowski! John Charles, the tattooed dragon Skabowski. Got a lot of pedigree and a lot of titles behind him. 90 fights, Luke. It seems as if he's uh, been around the block for a while. What can we expect from this fighter this evening? Yeah, you know, Skarbowski is something of an enigma in Muay Thai. He has been around a long time. It seemed there for quite a long time that many of the top Thai fighters in his weight category were trying to give him the slip. Uh, he is a tough character to deal with. Well, it seems to me, Luke, that most of the fighters who have fought against him will have seen him in the ring. But, I mean, it says, as I say in the card, that he's trained him under the unknown gym. There must be a lot of secrecy. I know that he moved from France to Thailand about five years ago, and he had a lot of pedigree in, in Europe when he was fighting there. How significant will it have been for him to move to Thailand? Uh, I think you'll find that fighters coming from their home country to train in Thailand, uh, they tend to adopt a calmness once they're in Thailand, actually. They take things at a, at a fairly slower pace overall. Uh, you'll see when they start out, they tend to feel the other fighter out more. There's not quite that aggro charge from your corner technique that most of the other fighters use. Well, it'll be an interesting matchup, this one, Luke. The Super Light World Championship title of the world about to be fought out here. I think the, the both fighters are going to start their Y crew very shortly. Um, tell us a bit about what that signifies and what it's supposed to mean. Right, Sid. Uh, the Y crew is one of the larger parts of the traditional ceremony involved with Muay Thai. It's under Muay Thai rules, it's required. And it's part and parcel with Muay Thai. OK, great. I think we're going to go to very shortly just watching uh, Skabowski here doing his Y crew. We're going to go to a recorded interview. Uh, I had a, an interview with Skabowski earlier on this evening. No, it's the first time for me in Hong Kong, and I'm uh, very glad to be here. Uh, I've always been interested in uh, visiting Hong Kong. Uh, it's a great city, uh, so I'm happy to be here, and I'm uh, going to make a beautiful fight for the Hong Kong people. I've been living in Thailand for five years now, and uh, I'm like learning new techniques. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are also helping me, like my, my trainer is giving me secrets of Thai boxing, because uh, I've been staying there five years, so it's like a family. So they really want to help me. Yeah, Buakao is the superstar at the moment. He's very famous. He's the K1 champion. 
Everybody talks to him all around the world, so it's a big occasion for me and a pleasure and an honor also to, to play with him. Skabowski there uh, paying a lot of respect to Burakai, his opponent this evening, K1 champion, looking at uh, Skabowski completing his Y crew there. Somebody once told me um, this evening that uh, in terms of Muay Thai and boxing, you can copy the moves, but can you do the thinking? And that was something that I want you to expand on, Luke, just so we can get an understanding of what it means for an international foreign fighter to go and study, live and work in Thailand. Well, you know, Sid, oftentimes what you'll see is foreign fighters that train in Muay Thai, they lack that serenity, they lack that calmness when they step into the ring. Okay, wait a second, Sid, here we've got a, an interview with Nathan Corbett. Hey, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this is going to be an awesome fight. I mean, Borkow's been fighting K1, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see him fight full tie rules again, which is you know, obviously what he's good at. And uh, Stabowski is just a, you know, a journeyman, so it'll be interesting. If, it, if there's no knockout before the third, I'm sure I'll probably go five rounds. And there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. I mean, it doesn't get any more accurate than that, especially coming from a fighter like Nathan Carnage Corbett, who doesn't Ladies have a white crew himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged that this about is Thanks sanctioned that, by Luke. Mr. Song Chai Looking on at uh, from the Song doing Chai his um, white crew, and there is Song Chai, a historic night for um, this gentleman who's given his title to the S1 category here in Hong Kong. Looking on at one of Thailand's favourite sons, a superstar Burkai here, is a very, very good Muay Thai fighter. Um, what significance will you draw from the fact that Borkai would have grown up in this culture, Luke, and the fact that the Y crew that he's doing, he'll be potentially looking down his nose at the international gentleman over the ring there, who's also finished his Y crew? Well, I think with Buakar, Buakar is a pretty even character. He'll come into the fight uh, with a lot of respect for his opponent. Anybody who makes it to this level and is going to fight a fighter like Buakar, um, gains the respect of Bulka. It's, 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 it's no small task that he's actually stepped into the same ring as Bulka. So I think Bulka is definitely going to give him the, the requisite respect that we would expect to see from uh, a Muay Thai fighter of his class. Well, I'm not a boxer myself, Luke, but um, is it true that the Y crew is really a, a, an occasion and an opportunity to help people put the bet on and get the gambling done? Well, you know, Sid, I don't know that a short white crew is uh, really going to give the bookies the time to get the numbers down. So <laughs> that, that could very well be the case. Uh, traditionally speaking, the white crew has always been something that gives the fighters time to get in the ring, show their proper respect uh, to the ring, to, to, the, to the world of Muay Thai fighting. And it gives them a chance to relax and warm up a bit as well. So really keeping along the, the, the Asian martial art tradition of thanking your ancestors and bringing them to bear on this fight that you're just about to go into. Yeah, there, there, are, there are many aspects of that. And there are, uh, in Thailand, as compared to the rest of the world, when people fight Muay Thai in Thailand, there are many, many small bits of superstition in it. Um, in the headband, in the Mong Khan, and in the, in the armbands. I was going to ask you, sorry to cut across you, the, the significance of the headbands and the armbands that they're sporting there, what, what is that? Well, traditionally, inside of those are scriptures, are small bits of prayer that have been rolled up and then wound up in, in the headband and in the armbands. And uh, there's, you can bet with these two fighters, there's a very good chance that they've both actually got those inside their headbands and armbands at this point. Well, looking at uh, Skabowski's back on a few of those shots, he's got a lot of heavy tattooing there. Um, my understanding was that a lot of chakra and a lot of prayer and a lot of ritualization has gone into that Thai tattooing that he's got. As I said earlier on, he's immersed himself in the culture. How similar will that be to some of the armband and the headband sort of culture that he's gone through? Yeah, well, that, that, uh, the tattoos that Skarbowski has, um, those are the traditional Thai tattoos. Uh, and you'll, you'll find that uh, many people in Thailand have them, and they're not done in your traditional tattoo shop. They're generally done by hand with a, a, a long spike on the end of a, a piece of bamboo or a long metal rod with the sharpened end. It's a long process, it's a painful process, um, and I think that long painful process is what Skarbowski is going to try and avoid here tonight in the ring with Buka. Well, as we're going to see uh, a, tradition, a very, very traditional Thai fighter in Buakai fighting, what sort of things can we expect to look out for? What are these going to be signature moves, Lou? Well, I think uh, Buka's really signature moves are his powerful kicks. 
He's confident when he gets in the ring. He's aggressive. Sorry, sorry to cut. These are roundhouse kicks, very similar to a hopkido, or are they sort of straight leg kicks. What, what sort of style? Uh, no, these are these are classic Muay Thai kicks. Roundhouse. The the trick is not to tap the opponent with it. The trick is to cut the opponent in half with it. So when he kicks, he's looking to cleave clean through the opponent. And, uh, and, and in Muay Thai, do, is it such that the kicks are really there to, to open up another part of the body to follow up with a punch? Or are they just sort of feeler kicks that were looking to damage the opponent all the way along the line? Uh, well, a, a standard front kick, or what in Thai is called a teep, will oftentimes be to keep the distance between you and an opponent or to set the opponent up for something. You get him with a teep and then you come back with a high roundhouse to the head. Gotcha. So it's a combination, but it's, I think it's fair to say that Muay Thai is definitely heavier on the kicking and knee side. Okay, I think we're going to Song Chai now live ringside just to get his prediction on who's going to win this one. Who do you think will win? Oh, oh. I think that was Burakai he was going for there. He was going for Burakai. So the Y crew still going down there. Um, Skabowski is looking on personally, looking on very, very straight faced and stony faced. Yeah, I think in the, in the Y crew, oftentimes, you'll, yes, exactly, you'll see a bit of taunting. And I think this is oftentimes uh, where a fighter can win or lose the fight before they've even thrown a single punch. Really haven't seen this sort of taunting before from the, uh, the Y crew. Skarbowski looks slightly less than amused with it all. Buakal is confident, and uh, oftentimes he does put his opponents off their mark with his elaborate Y crew. So we'll have to see how this plays out. We'll see if we'll see if he actually puts Skarbowski off his game with this. Well, this, this is going to be the super lightweight world title fight about to start. We've got both fighters have been schooled in Thailand. Both of them have done elaborate Y crews. Borokai's one is slightly longer and slightly more elaborate, but the stony-faced Frenchman there, Skarbowski, really, really looking to be very, very focused at the beginning of this fight. Very, very focused indeed. Standing just above us here at the ring. Well, and I think a lot of what we're going to see here is we, we're, we're going to see the reason Buka is confident. He's Ladies fought some of the world's best. He's fought in Japan K1 Max and beat Masada, who was Japan's top fighter. He's fought John Wayne Parr from Australia, who is one of Australia's top fighters. He's beat a whole host of champions. So I think what we're going to see tonight is a, is a real battle between these two. Just got a glimpse there, ringside of Nathan Carnage Corbett with uh, Sheehan, Pierre and Gracia just at the start of this fight. Really now getting warmed up. The crowd is really, really getting excited here for this super lightweight world championship title Song Chai S1 category here in Hong Kong. The seconds are out, so we've got Burakai in the blue shorts and we've got Skobowski in the yellow shorts there to the right. The referee's getting them in the centre of the ring. They're just about to get cracking here on this one. World championship title. Any final predictions, Luke, before this one's underway? Uh, no predictions from me, but I think this is one of the most anticipated Muay Thai fights in recent history. Here, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the second main event of the evening. They touch gloves and are underway. Really just feeding each other out early on. Skabowski there, just looking on, looking on as Burakai starts that, as you say, that bouncing traditional Thai boxing move. Just feeling each other, looking at each other, finding the weaknesses, finding the distance. And you, you'll notice the rhythm that they've opened up with. You'll notice how the rhythm relates to the, the traditional traditional Muay Thai music that's being played. Notice how calm they both are. They're not charging in, they're yeah, taking their yeah. time. There's evidently a lot of respect here. Absolutely, very, very different to the last fight where we saw the flashing opening. This gun seems to be two very traditional Thai boxers keeping their guards very high, just leading with a lot of leg kicks. Skabowski there landed one. There's another one, a straight leg kick to the midriff. And those, those little teeps that you're seeing are, are a staple of Muay Thai, used to open the opponent up. Oh, oh so now we've started, now we've started Skowski, a couple of leg sweeps, attempted leg sweeps there by Skowski, followed up then again by, by Borkai, he's kept him at distance, going for a high kick, high block there from Borkai. Is blocking a big part of um, their technique here, or do they just absorb the punches and the kicks? Uh, there is some blocking. There's there's a couple different things one can do. You can step out of range. You can counter. You can block. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to be on the blocking end trying to block any of Buakar's kicks. He's a pretty heavy kicker. Really? Okay, Sabowski there has put in another kick, low kick in, and followed up with a, a small left-hand jab, keeping him at his distance. We're just feeding each other out here. One thing you'll notice is their stances are much more square on than traditional Western boxing. 
Uh, they don't stand with one foot in the bucket like most Western boxers do. They oh. tend to stand square on, square shouldered. They don't make any effort to make themselves a narrow profile like boxers do. And it's, it's a very different technique in that, in that sense than boxing is. Well, Kai almost going for the leg catch there and grab. Oh, Sabowski's put in a kick and there's a high kick flashed in from Borokai there. Made a fantastic connection with the side of the head. Just touched gloves there again for some reason. But really started keeping the tempo high, showing what lightning fast foot speed, as you predicted, Luke, uh, Borokai's got here. See if he can bring some more of this to bear later on in this fight. This one looks as if it might go the distance. They're really, really feeling each other out here. So if there's going to be any explosions of power from either fighter. Sabowski there just keeping him at his distance from short leg kick stuff. Same with, same with um, Borokai there as we come into the last 30 seconds of this first opening round in this super lightweight world championship title here in Hong Kong. And as you'll notice, if, if, if this fight, if there isn't a knockout by the third round, uh, I think we can expect this fight to go the full five rounds. Sabowski there trying to make a, an impact towards the end of the, uh, the first, first period here, the first round. Borkai starting with another really swipe, punchy kick. They come in from both fighters. Borkai responded with another one. There's another one, punch, punch and a kick, and that's the end of the first round. It went really according to bat. They're both really just feeding each other out here at the, at the early part of this first round of this tournament championship title. Zaboski waiting for his seconds to come into the ring. Borkai getting some words of advice from his seconds in his corner. Let's have a quick look again at some of the action from the first uh, first round, some of the early exchanges. Luke, talk us through the Borkai kick. Okay, they have a bit of an exchange. Uh, right there, what we see is Skarbowski responds, and I think if we, if we can go to a, a slow-mo replay, slower than what we just saw, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see they exchange. Skarbowski drops his guard a bit. When that happens, Bulkov steps up, changes his stance, and fires the front leg, and that's what catches Skarbowski in the head. It's classic textbook Muay Thai. And he really deals with it quite well, because there's the power coming in, and you can see the head jerk back. It's full-on contact. Oh, yeah, that's a Skarbowski that deals is, with it very well. That is a nick snapper, um, and that is to Skarbowski's credit that he remains standing on a kick like that. Bulkov has put dozens of fighters on the canvas with that exact same kick. And was that uh, some of the 90 fight experience that Skarbowski bringing to bear showing there in the first round? Yeah, yeah and generally just the fact that I think Skarbowski is, is a very, very tough night. Together, and now it's going to be the better man that walks out of the ring with the trophy. Let's see what happens here at the start of the second round. Referee just toweling down uh, Skarbowski there, towel still in the ring. And we're underway here, they're feeling each other out again. A small left from Skarbowski there, small jabs keeping him his distance. Borkai keeping his guard very high. Skabowski doesn't seem to have learned from the first period. Oh, he's opened him up again with a right foot followed by a left foot to the head there from Borkai. Very high guard there from the Thai fighter. The Frenchman Skabowski keeping his guard low. Has, maybe he hasn't learned from the first round. And what you'll see with, with Borkai is he often prances on his front foot and that is done partially for defense, but it's also done so that he can throw a teep or that push kick in there uh, at will, basically. And that's why both of them have that bouncing going on with the front foot. It's very typical for Muay Thai fighters to, to have switch, that stance. Switch kick again there, switch step again. Very quick feet from Borkai, showing really why he's done so much damage in, in his Japanese fights. Really getting kicks up high very early and very quickly. Let's see if Skaborski keeps that right hand slightly higher, goes in with a left jab. Just really keeping him at his distance. Goes again for a kick, and a teep kick there again from Skrabowski. Doesn't really shake Borkai. Just pushing each other and keeping each other at a distance. Another left jab, keeping him there. I think Borkai's looking at that right hand drop slightly too low and waiting to pounce with that very rapid left kick. And one thing you'll notice with both the fighters is that they, they both remain calm. They both keep looking the other fighter square in the eye. And nobody gets something for nothing in Muay Thai. So if Skarbowski throws something, Bulkov's going to respond. If Bulkov throws something, Skarbowski's going to respond right off. And that's, that's what you're seeing here. It's like Thai boxing chess going on as they just feel each other out and have alternate moves. Nothing's really happening here. Skarbowski's just keeping him at his distance. Both bouncing on that front left leg. There comes another teep kick again from Bulkov. Skabowski responds with another one to the midriff, just keeping him at his distance. They exchange kicks again. Skabowski trying to raise the tempo, oh, and a sweep leg goes down. He just drops to the canvas, puts his arms in the air, and touch gloves, and they're, on, they're off again. The ref was going to stop that one, but it's all, uh, it's all square as they keep going forward. Where are the points going so far in this one, as you've seen? Oh, there's, there's the leg kick again from uh, Borkai. Comes in for a clinch there from uh, Skabowski. A little bit of close knee work. 
The ref's had enough of that and splits them up. Very fast, quick legs again from the Thai national as he comes over the top of that dropped right hand from Zabowski. We've seen that a couple of times now in the opening rounds. Let's see how Zabowski deals with it, Just keeping him at a distance. You know, Sid, I think if you had to score this round at this point now, I think you'd probably see more of the points going to Buakha just for the, the sheer execution of technique and the sheer power and just simply that he's landing a lot of those big kicks. It looks absolutely fantastic. We're going to the last 30 seconds of this second round. Buakha seems very composed, very, very relaxed. Zabowski the same, but a very, very drops that right hand very, very low, but got it up there for the block. Let's see how he responds. Yep, going up with his right foot now, Buakha trying to, trying to get in behind that Zabowski guard. Not going straight through the guard. Sabowski keeping him at a distance. Borokai pushed in a small teep kick. And a knee to the head there. Oh, they've accelerated this one. It's a flying knee from Borokai there. Just narrowly avoided. Well blocked. And you'll notice towards the end of this round, you'll notice that... Ah, there we go, the end of the round. You'll notice towards the end of this round that Skarbowski started keeping a little bit more distance because Buwaka was at one point almost landing those high roundhouses to the head at will. So he backed off a bit. Let's have a quick look at um, some of that second round action, Luke. Talk us through this. I think what we're going to see here is the... Yeah, he sweeps him. He, he attempts to catch Skarbowski's leg. Skarbowski throws, he catches it. And the first thing Buakha does is he goes in and he tries and to kick the other leg, back leg there. Yeah. yeah, he's kicking him right on the back of the knee joint. The leg will fall. Sure. And that's a, a totally legal and legitimate move in Muay Thai. Yes, exactly. Yeah, let's have another look at that. Here we've got it again. You're going to see Skarbowski throws. This is the high leg kick, I think, coming in from Borkai there. And try to respond from Saboski. And he moves into the clinch on that one. It's the second time that he's got it in over that, high, that low right hand from Saboski. Do you think that's going to come back to haunt Saboski later on in this fight? I think it's definitely something that, that Buakai has an eye for. He's one of those kids that he's stepped in the ring many, many times and he's just saw the slightest millimeter of difference in somebody's guard and exploited it. And I, I think it could be a problem for Skarbowski with that. Well, Skarbowski, with six years on uh, the younger Thai fighter at 24, really, you know, he's had 90 fights. I mean, he's a very, very experienced campaigner in both Europe and in Thailand. He really should be able to open this guy up, shouldn't he? Uh, yeah, and that, that is, that is again, that is to, to Buakar's credit, to show, you know, to, it just highlights his talent and his, his rock solidness as a fighter. Um, and I think here's really where we're going to, that's going to be what decides the match is who can, who can find that opening and exploit it. Okay, here we go with the start of round three, a bit of light toweling by the ref and the open exchanges again, much more offensive from Skowalski here at the start of round three, a left and a right combo there, bit of a, a push round. Borkai just keeps him around with a, a leg kick to the leg, and they've, they've really opened this tempo up. You're going to see Skarbowski Whoa. starting to throw more elbows in there. He's letting that elbow glide in after the hooks. Fantastic work from Skarbowski. Really, he's opened it. I think he's seconds in his ring. Nantra Khan would have told him to really raise the tempo. They've started, as you said, the first two rounds were at standard Muay Thai pace. But Skarbowski's really trying to have a, a big blood boxing into this midriff punching and straight arms, trying to keep him at a distance. One, thing, one thing you're really going to see here, Sid, is you're, you're going to notice that Buakha, when he throws his roundhouse kicks, he's, he's generated a huge amount of rotational power. And you can hear it when they land. They're, they're impressive. When he really commits to that, that's it. There's no turning back. He's there to cause some damage. And sooner or later, those shots that Skarbowski's blocking are going to start to take a wear and tear toll on his arms. He's going to have a hard time keeping that guard up even as high as he's got it now. Well, this is for the Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Oh, and he's got, he's got off his leg and he's punched him in the midriff there. The referee's jumped all over that one. He doesn't like to see that, doesn't like to see that at all. Brings him back to the center of the ring. Walker keeping his guard up again. Sabowski really coming in for a clinch. Let's see how he works this one. Good upper body strength as they go. Throwing some knees, exchanging knees there on the ropes. Walker's trouble. Boom, right here. I think what you could boot just spin oh, him and he's throwing him. onto the sprung onto the deck. Okay. A lot of the ties have an amazing talent for locking up in the clinch and just slightly turning, spinning, and dumping the opponent on the canvas. And uh, when you're you're sweaty and you're 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 full of energy like these guys are, um, I think you're going to see a bit more of that. Borkai seems to be uh, really, really trying to respond to this fast tempo that Sabowski started the opening part of this third round. They really have sort of picked up the pace a bit here, just exchanging teeth kicks, keeping each other at a distance. Sabowski's trying to come in with some punches and follow it up with the elbow. But his guard's slightly low on that right side. I still feel he's a bit exposed. You see what uh, question Saboski can pose here to Borkai. He's really getting in closer now. He's really getting in closer now as they see each other getting really, really putting these teep kicks in, trying to keep them away. Saboski started, punched the midfield. Oh, punched the right head. 
right landed a fantastic right hander there from Borko. Really shocked Chaboski, but he's sh showing that he's got a lot of strength and a lot of exposure and a lot of experience for this uh, 90 fights he's had. He really is taking these shots well. Borko is landing some absolutely fantastic shots. There's another one, left jump to the arm. He's coming for the clinch. He's tried the flying knee. He's missed it. Chaboski's in a little bit of trouble here on the ropes. Borko really putting some power in as we're coming to the last 30 seconds of the third round here. Borko's really putting him under pressure with some teep kicks now. You can see he's really coming forward. There's a flying right arm there from yeah, uh, Chaboski. Oh, big reverse elbow there from Skrabowski. And another one as he tried to put it. didn't connect, I don't think. His tempo is very, very high in this third round here. They're really getting close in for some really, really tight work. Yeah, that's the end of the third round. Two reverse elbows right there in a row, Sid. That's rough stuff to deal with, and that's, uh, that's testament to both of their skill. They're not easy to land, and they're certainly not easy to defend against. Sabowski looks a little bit jaded as he actually walked across to the wrong corner there in front of us in the ring. Talk us through these replays here. Yeah, he throws a big hook to the body there, left hook to the body, and then Skarbowski responds by playing a reverse spinning elbow, and again. And Burkai seems to put in the right kick there to the, to the right tempo. I don't know if it landed. Let's have another look at that from a, the same angle. That was the kick that went in. I think it may have landed, then there was the elbow, yeah. It was two reverse spin elbows right in a row there, and you're going to see he comes in, steps in, textbook, and just, that just, contact? just that grazes. Kick just missed. From where, from where I'm sitting down here at ringside, Burkai looks much, much fitter, much sharper, much leaner. He looks as if he's in a lot less trouble uh, than Sabowski looks. Do you concur with that? Uh, yeah, you know, that's that's always that's always a, a bit hard to tell. If you saw Skorbowski in street clothes, you probably wouldn't rate him, but it could be the, the last thing you ever did. Um, there's no doubt about it. Burkai himself is, 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 is chiseled. He's a man made of teak. Um, but, you know, he hasn't knocked out Skorbowski yet. So, Skorbowski's still in the fight, he's still here, and uh, let's see what happens. Round four. And they're underway at the beginning of the fourth. Let's see if the tempo starts by an elbow over the top there from Skorbowski. Didn't land that one. Goes for an uppercut, didn't connect that one either. There's another right arm, two, three right arms coming in. Another of these landing, punch to the midriff section, a kick to the midriff section. He's really asking some questions here now, Sabowski. Well, you notice the lightning speed kicks that, that Buokha is throwing. You'll notice he's hiked his shorts way up, and that's a good indicator that he's going to try and take off Skorbowski's head Absolutely. or take his ribs clean out. We saw him doing some stretching on the high kick region in the, with the seconds in his corner, actually, in between these two rounds. Let's see if that uh, pans out. Okay, so you know one of the things that you, you'll, you'll want to take note of here is you're going to see that Skorbowski is going to resort back to hands. He's leading in with big punches, some overhand rights. He's trying to jab his way in. It's a little bit different than, than the approach that Bulka is using, who's sticking to his roots, which would be definitely the kicking side of things. Yeah, massive difference from the opening rounds where they were both all legs, keeping each other at a distance. You're absolutely right. sabowski has gone very much to, oh, it's good, the left elbow there, very much to punching and jabbing to keep him at a distance. Yeah, he, he jumped right in there with that charging elbow, saw an opening and tried to exploit it. Um, I'm not sure that Skorbowski's having much of that, but Bulkar's really, really pressing here. Bulkar kick to the right there, and another kick to the left midriff, really keeping it at a distance. Just really blocks up when Sabowski comes in for a punch. We'll try to finish there with a one-two combo. Bulkar coming over the top with the right leg. You'll notice Bulkar doesn't leave it for long. He'll throw a kick, and then he'll follow it up with a, a two oh, or three Oh, there's combo. a big left big kick there, shot big the shot. Head. Exactly as you predicted, that left leg with the shorts hiked up. Really all legs from Burkai. Let's see if uh, Sabowski's chin is strong enough to take this into the middle of the fourth round. A lot of punches being thrown by Sabowski, not really doing much damage though. That's what seems to be the point from where I am. Yeah, you know, Burkai will just constantly keep throwing that front leg with switch step. Without a switch step, he keeps throwing it. And when he doesn't throw it as a roundhouse, he'll use it as a push kick to keep the distance or to, to put his opponent off their pace. Um, so I think... I think Skorbowski really wants to watch out for that front leg of Burkai. Well, Burkai is obviously going to use the tactics where the knees... I mean, it looks as if it might be cut there, Sabowski, there, but it looks as if the, the jabs and the, some of the kicks coming into the midriff are going to drop that right arm down. Big kick there from Sabowski, which will leave him open over the top, as we saw in the earlier rounds. Missed with an elbow there for Sabowski. Big kick to the midriff. Burkai really starting to raise the tempo of this one. Let's see if um, they're going to raise it towards the end of this fourth round here in this championship super lightweight title here in Hong Kong. Sabowski yep. trying to push him away. Burkai as we enter the last 30 seconds. Got him with an elbow there, Sabowski, but didn't really connect that one. Big kicking again from 
Hawkeye trying to keep him away. Sabowski just looks a little bit flapping with these legs, not really making much impact. Yeah, I don't so know. Oh, that. he's put him on the ropes there. Set him up perfectly there, put him on the ropes and then tried to take his chin off with that kick. Yeah, with a flying knee, bit of a spin move, and Sabowski gets him off him very quickly. Ref comes in and splits them up, touching gloves. A lot of respect shown by these two fighters. That's the end of the fourth. First time we've seen Sabowski show some upper body strength to throw uh, the young Thai fighter, Borkai. How's that going to affect uh, Borkai's confidence, you think, Luke, before we look at the replays? Well, you know, Sid, I think, I think for Thai fighters, going down to the canvas is not the big deal that it is in Western boxing. There's a huge stigma with going down in Western boxing. I think we're going to the first replay here of the first leg kick from Borkai. Talk us through this. Okay. He sets him up there, tied up up top, and he just throws that big front leg leg kick after a small switch step, and he catches him with it. And then the, the, this is the upper body throw. He just spins him onto the ropes. Doesn't seem to be much in that. Borkai seems completely unflustered. Yeah, the, the Thai fighters are pretty hard to fluster with something like that. Um, Skarbowski was basically trying to save himself there because Borkai was coming in with that big left knee. And he caught it at the last moment, but he managed to turn him off. It kind of threw Borkai under the ropes. I don't think of much consequence for Borkai, really. And, and a beautiful fight. Uh, was it a beautiful throw from where you were sitting? Uh, no, actually, that's a, there are awkward moments in beautiful fights, and that would that would be one of them in this beautiful fight. It's it's very much a, a, a caught out moment. Neither fighter really sustained damage. I think maybe Skarbowski got the better of that simply because he avoided that massive knee that was coming in. This will be the fifth and final round of the end. Both fighters got a lot of respect for each other as they enter the fifth and final round. What has Sabowski got to do to okay, win this fight, Luke? Uh, to win this, I think he'd, we're, we'd have to be looking at a KO at this point. Um, Bulkar has gone in, he's landed a lot of big kicks, he's showing more aggression, he's showing more power. So I, I think really, Skarbowski's really got to come out with a KO to pull it out of the hat, which I don't think is going to happen. But let's see, maybe he's, maybe he's got some tricks up his sleeves. Bulkar's starting off with some, some up-close works, a lot of legs, there's the, uh, the upper leg kick again. Sabowski trying to keep him at distance with the punches, flailing the legs, not really catching. Sabowski, 90, a 90 fighter, going in for a clinch to see if he can do anything here. Holding him against the ropes. And the ref comes in to break this one up. And when you, when you, when you look at Borka throwing his shots, he's just, he's just a man of confidence. You can see he doesn't back off. He's looking Skarbowski square in the eye the whole way through. A uh, little uppercut there from Skarbowski. Oh, big, big right, right hand, big right hand there. Fantastic. And that's... Uh, Bulkar doesn't often throw punches, but when he does, they're full of power and he puts that whole torso and that whole hip rotation into him. But Sabowski is showing a lot, of, um, a lot of strength and a lot of confidence. He's taking a lot of shots to the jaw. Bulkar trying to get him to get in the clinch and get him thrown, but nothing happening. But Sabowski is showing a lot of confidence and a lot of strength. But let's see if Bulkar can close this one out with the legs. I've seen a, I don't know where I would call this at the moment. It's a bit even for me. Where would you call this one? Uh, I'd say this is Bulkar. If you look at Skarbowski, he's dropping his hands there. He's, look, he's starting to look like he's gassing a bit. He is tired. Yeah. He hasn't got the resilience and he hasn't got the, the, the gusto that we're seeing uh, Bulkar approach this with. Bulkar from the first round to this round is still I throwing got. those kicks with the same exact speed that he was when he started out. Um, I don't really know that we're seeing Skarbowski charge in or throw anything with the same speed that he was when he started out. You look at uh, Skarbowski's footwork now, it's very heavy footed and a bit leaden, whereas uh, Borkai still seems quite sprightly. He's up close, there's no elbows, there's no clinches, there's no knees going in there. There's a knee there from Borkai. Let's see if Skarbowski can actually raise this one. They're keeping each other, keeping each other at a distance. A lot of respects, as I said earlier on. There's a high kick coming in from Zabowski. Didn't really seem to, to worry Borkai that much. The switch up, oh, oh, that's a big right big hander. Shots. Big right hander, and he's given him his like, gum shield has come out, I think. Caught him clean with the one two right there. Skarbowski's keen to get back into it. Fantastic work from the, the young 24 year old Thai international. Uh, and there it is, that switch step is very, very quick feet. Really, this seeing the technique that's really damaged. Oh, great oh. movement again from Sabowski. The, this is the second one, you're exactly right there, Sid. Skarbowski skipped two of those in a row, missing him by inches. It really could have caused him some problems. Burkai looking to close this one out in regulation in the uh, top of the fifth. Sabowski back on his toes, really. The crowd really starting to raise both fighters. They know what's at stake here, this world championship title at the at stake. Both fighters going in for a really tight clinch. Burkai and Sabowski trying to put a lot of knee work in as we enter the last 30 seconds just above us in the ring. Is the ref going to stop it? No, they're working. No, he's, he's coming to split them apart here. Who's your money on now, Luke? Who's going to take this title home? Uh, my money at this point would have to be on Bukar. He's ahead on points. He's still showing more power, still showing more aggression. Let's see. Sabowski. Oh, Sabowski's down. He caught his leg and pushed him over. Sabowski pounces, jumps up to his feet. 
trying to dedicate that it wasn't a technical knockdown. He was actually just fell. Toboski must have a little bit of work to do in the last 10 seconds of this. It may have slipped away from him. Let's see if there's any threat punches thrown, and that's it. Burkai raises his hands up. Toboski doesn't raise his hands up, but that probably tells its own story. He looks a very tired and dejected man as he comes over to Nantrakan in the corner. He's number two. And Burkai starts to thank the crowd in every four corner of this, of this ring. Really uh, walking around like a man. Let's have talk us through this action replays of that final period. Double punch there to the chin. Yeah, he set him up with the classic one-two. I don't know if he actually caught him with that jab, that lead jab, but he did catch him big with that right. He caught him big enough. Let's look at it again in slow-mo. There's the first, there's the second. I mean, that's going to score very highly as the gum shield comes out of there. Yeah, he did fantastic work from the... Exactly, Kong. exactly, Sid. He caught him clean with that, with the jab, and but the, the big right cross had a little bit more power in it, and that's what, what took his gum shield out. And that's uh, just seeing again there Slavoski's fall, but you can see his hand have dropped to a very low level there. They're really down at waist height. And let's see if we can look at a, another replay again. But the, the hands were down very, very low, and I can't believe that um, a fighter of his class with 90 fights under his belt really was going to trouble him with that sort of technique on the defense. No, I, I think you're, you're, you're right about that. I think you, you can see um, Skarbowski is looking a bit tired here uh, compared to Bukha. Bukha looks like he did when he stepped in the ring. Absolutely. Uh, a little bit sweatier, but he's looking relaxed, confident. I, I think he uh, had it in the bag. Okay, let's see if um, the judges, the three judges agreed with you, Luke. I think they probably did. Um, Sabowski does look sort of a, a very beaten and dejected man there. Uh, there were a lot of kicks and a lot of punches that landed. Let's see if Pill Play is just collating the results. Ladies and gentlemen, over to Phil in the ring. One, scored at red corner 47, blue corner 48. 47, red corner, blue corner 48. Judge two scored at red corner 46, blue corner 49. Red 46, blue 49. Judge three scored at red corner 47, blue corner 50. Red corner, 47, blue corner, 50. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, King Kong Bakal! So there it is, King Kong Bakal takes it just as you predicted, Luke, with a straight points victory to become the super lightweight world champion at the S1 category here in Hong Kong at the Queen Elizabeth Stadium. Yeah, I would have to say uh, Skarbowski, even when by the time they read the second decision uh, from the judges there, it, it, it was written all over Skarbowski's face that Bulba had taken it. And I think if he, uh, Skarbowski, he did end, up, did end the fight looking a bit more winded, a bit worse for the wear. Um, Buakar is still looking relatively fresh. He's all smiles now with that big S1 belt right around his waist. And as you can see there, you've got Alex Chai and um, Song Chai there, both uh, in the presentation committee there, bringing Sabovsky in uh, for the award photos. What's going to happen to uh, Buakar's career as he goes forward now, having won this belt here? I think with Buakar, it's going to be just more of a progression uh, to remain in the upper echelons of the international Muay Thai scene. Um, as we can see, he's, he's fought guys like Kozo Takeda of Japan in the World K1 World Max in Tokyo uh, 2004. He beat John Wayne Parr. Both of those, both Kozo and Wayne Parr, he beat on decisions.